Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. The body of Christ, I greet you this morning. Amen. Indeed, I want to thank God for this wonderful opportunity to share the good news of Jesus Christ. All over the world, if there's never a time people are listening to news on all the media platforms, it is now. But for the church, we have got the good news. Amen. And that is the good news of Jesus Christ. Is there anyone that is in agreement with me this morning? Let's go, and go ahead and celebrate the goodness of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Rev. Praise God. Indeed, I want to greet your worthy moderator, Pastor Nemard and wife and family, all the executive members, small people, those that are viewing online. Praise the name of Jesus. I greet you, visiting friends, in the wonderful name of Jesus. I'm so glad to be in the house of the Lord another worship day. And for us as pastors, it has been a challenging one because every three weeks, the government make new plans. And so as leaders of the church, we have to adjust to meet the requirement of our country. But look on somebody and say, that's all right. That's all right. With Christ in the vessel, we can smile at any storm. Amen. And for the month of September, it was another challenging month. Amen. When the, the count went down to 20. But glory to God for this Sunday, it is up to 50. Can somebody stand with me and give a dance? You're glad to be in the house of the Lord. Come on, man. Give a dance for the goodness of God that he has allowed you to be in the sanctuary. Amen. To give all praise and honor and thanksgiving and your offering and your talents and your time to Jesus Christ, our King, this morning. Amen. And so I am really happy to be in the house of the Lord. I bring you greetings from the Effortville Pentecostal Church of God family, where I serve as host pastor, and also from the Pentecostal Church of God Jamaica branch, where I serve as the discipleship ministry director for the island. I also bring you greetings from my dear husband, who pastors a smaller congregation in Portland Cottage. Amen. And so he's not here with me this morning, and he sends his love. With me is my neighbor and sister in ministry, Amen. And friend, Mother Sonia Mackenzie, praise the name of the Lord. And it's really a joy for her. For such a long time, she has not been in church. And for the person who steps out for her to come in, she's really happy this morning. Amen. To be with the Dembe Assembly family. Amen. Praise God. Greetings to my family, my in-laws, the young, and it's really good to stay young. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. While the praise team was singing, I feel a sense of revival in the house. Amen. There were some songs that really, really, really challenged my heart and blessed me through these years in ministry. Amen. Like my young companion, fear you well. 40 years ago when I was saying goodbye to sin and accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, that song still steers me this morning. And I want to say to the praise team, continue to give up your talent and your praise to the kingdom of God. A little more oil in my lamp. Keep it burning. This present generation don't know about whom sweet whom. But we who are 40 and over understand, hallelujah, about buying a quarter, two quarts of cursing oil, and every night you have to pour into that lamp to keep it burning. And that's why church is important to us as Christians, because for the plants to survive, they need earth. For the fish to survive, they need water. But for the Christians to survive, we need the word of God. Hallelujah. So every opportunity that we get to come to church uh, online or face to face uh, and listen to the word of God, it is for growth. It is for maturity. It is for strength. 
in this great ministry. So I take it as a real honor this morning, amen, to serve the body of Christ here in Tembe Gospel Assembly. I want to share with you this word that the Lord has laid on my heart, amen, from Psalm 90 and verse 12. Psalm chapter 90 and verse 12. And it says to us, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Can we say it together one more time? Psalm 90 and verse 12. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Amen. My topic that I want to share with you today says taking and making time for God. Taking and making time for God. So it is a continuous thing to take time and to make time for God. As I search the scriptures, I realize in Hebrews 4 and verse 12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing the dividing asunder of souls and spirits, of joys and marrow. The word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. I love the word because in Matthew 4, Jesus answered and said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Also, Psalm 119, verse 130 reminds us, the entrance of thy word giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. And so you see why I love the word of God this morning. Isaiah 40, verse 8 says, the grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of God stands forever. Somebody praise him. It's a good time to praise him. It's a good time to praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as a Christian, I have my own Bible. Whether you have it on your phone or your tablet or, or, or paper, you can say with me this morning, this is my Bible. Yes, I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I'll be taught the word of God. I'll boldly confess my mind is alert and I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Look on your neighbor and say, make sure you have your own Bible. I'm not lending your mind today. Amen. You need to have your own word. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Eternal God and Father, we thank you for today. We are grateful for your goodness. This is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And as your servant stands to declare your word today, I pray that you will unctionize me one more time. Let your word come forth with clarity and power, and let your word accomplish that it will set out to do. We come against every distraction of the enemy every spirit of slumberness and weariness. We pull it down right now in the name of Jesus and we trample on the feet uh, and we call forth alertness uh, and attentiveness, Lord, to your word, Jesus, uh, because we understand that in you we live and move uh, and have our being. I pray, Lord God Almighty, that you will be with us. Uh, let a word today revive somebody. A word today will allow somebody to make a deeper decision to serve and work for you. A word today will bring healing. A word today will be comfort to those that are mourning. A word today, oh God Almighty, will bring strength to the weak. And a word today that will bring salvation to the lost. Cover us under your blood. We come against the plans of the enemy. We push him back 100 degrees radius right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, and remember, we render his plan powerless. And you will accomplish that which you have set out to do this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Somebody praise him this morning. Somebody praise him this morning. Somebody praise him this morning. Somebody praise him. Come on, put those hands together. Put those hands together. Give God what he deserves. Give him the praise that he deserves this morning. He's a king of kings. He's a conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. Jehovah is his name. Mighty warrior, great in battle. Jehovah is his name. Uh, 
the, the, the praise team also sing, I feel good. I get excited when they talk about Jesus. Oh, somebody help me praise God. Every time I talk about Jesus, I, he's my healer. He's my reason for living. He's my source of survival. So every minute of the day, would you give me Jesus? Taking and making time for God. Time is a very precious and perishable commodity. Can I say that again? Time is a very precious and perishable commodity. With mercy towards none and impatience towards all. It steadily slips away minute by minute. Hour by hour, day by day. Even while we take the time today to consider the subject, our life like a mist are gradually vanishing from the earth's sea. Amen. According to James 4 and verse 14, for what is life, my big brother said, it is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. The psalmist had this truth in mind when he prayed. So teach us to number our days. Amen. Hallelujah. So every one of us must have a record. And the record that each one of us should be keeping right now is to number our days. Amen. If there's never time, this world is experiencing death. We are in a season of death. We are in a pandemic. Amen. And if the COVID virus uh, isn't taking man uh, murder and all other diseases are taking men out. But I look through the scriptures and I see where Jesus said in his words, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints. Amen. So when a sinner die, Satan rejoice. But when a Christian dies, heavens rejoice. So go ahead and praise him this morning. Go ahead and praise him this morning. Hallelujah. I want to share with you before I go further on the background of the book of Psalm. The keys to the book of Psalm. The key word for Psalm is worship. Giving God what is worth. Amen. The central truth of the book of Psalm is worship. God is worthy of all praise because of who he is because of what he has done and because of what he will do. Oh, somebody praise him. His goodness extend through time and eternity. Amen. The key verse for Psalm is Psalm, 100 and, Psalm 19 rather and verse 14. And all of us know that verse. The key verse for Psalm, the book of Psalm is Psalm 19 verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So the words of our mouth, God is paying attention to them. And that's why it's good to give praise and adoration to him. Another verse for Psalm is Psalm 145 and verse 21. And it says, my mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. So God is paying attention to our conversation. The key chapter for Psalm is Psalm 100. Make what? A joyful noise unto the Lord. All he lands, whether Americans, whether Jamaicans, oh God, whether English or Australians, glory to God. Ah, those in Afghanistan and different parts of the world, God expects us to make a joyful noise unto him. Amen. Hallelujah. And if there's never time, homes are having church, it is now. Because a joyful noise should be coming from every home. Glory to God. When you look around and see that God wakes you up in your right mind, you got to shoot a praise to him. Hallelujah. When you look and see that he carry you to first form as young people, to primary school, you
you have to give him a praise. Hallelujah. 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 And so many blessings uh, that God have extended unto us. Uh, much more this great salvation. We have to praise him. Because it's not we that keep ourselves. But it's Jesus Christ that is keeping us. So we see so many of the favorite chapters of the Bible are contained in the book of Psalms. That it is difficult to select key chapter among such as Psalm 1, Psalm 22, Psalm 23, Psalm 24, Psalm 37, Psalm 72, Psalm 100, Psalm 101, Psalm 119, Psalm 121, and Psalm 150. The two central themes of worship and praise are and beautifully wed in Psalm 100. Amen. And it's indeed a honor this morning to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. When we look on the authorship, date, and historical setting of Psalm, most people automatically think of David when they consider the questions of who wrote the book of Psalm. David was a shepherd boy who rose to become the most famous king of Judah. He was also known as the sweet psalmist of Israel as it is written in 2 Samuel 23 verse 1. And it's a beauty to look in the church congregation this morning face to face that we have got some young men, some young ladies, uh, hallelujah, that deem it to be among the 50 this morning to come to give high praise to the King of Kings uh, and Lord of Lords. That tells me that the ministry here in Denby is moving forward. Hallelujah. Because one generation shall teach another generation how to honor the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Don't try to tell me this morning that God is dead. He woke me up. And when I walk into your worship service this morning, he's right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I brought my praise. I am happy to be in the house of the Lord. I hear the psalm. He said, I will bless the Lord. At all times, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. While it is clear that David wrote many of the individual psalms, he's definitely not the author of the entire collection. So the 150 psalm, not all of them was written by David. Two of the psalms, that's Psalm 72 and 127, uh, are attributed to Solomon, David's son and successor. Psalm 90 is a prior assigned to Moses. Amen. Another group of 12 psalms, Psalm 50, Psalm 73 to 83, is ascribed to the family of Asa. The sons of Korah wrote 11 psalms. For Psalm 42, Psalm 44 to 49, Psalm 84 and 85, 87 and 88. Psalm 88 is attributed to Eman, while Psalm 89 is assigned to Etham, the Ezra, Ezra art. Amen. With the exception of Solomon and Moses, all these additional authors were priests and Levites who were responsible for providing music for sanctuary worship during David's reign. 50 of the psalm designate no specific person as author. So we are grateful this morning that God still speaks to men. People are still writing songs and prayer because God is still a talking God. Hallelujah. And so our text reminds us, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. What it is, Pastor, what does it mean to number our days or my days? It is to highly value and wisely use the time God has allotted you. It is highly wisely and uh, valuable to use the time God has allotted me. And I'm an excited 54 year old, amen, because I realize uh, that every day God has given me is important. If we want our lives to count for God, we must get to know God. Hallelujah. The Bible said in St. John 17 verse 3, and this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only one true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. So God set himself in a way that he wants us to know him. 
Today, if I ask so many of you, do you know Sharon Kisun? Some of you would say yes in a small way. And some would say in a greater way. As I served 30 years at Dr. Charles Roberts' office, some of you know me from there. Some of you know me, glory to God, because of faith and ministers paternal and different ways. But do you really know the color that I like? Do you know my, the meal that I like? You don't really know me. Hallelujah. You know, you know just something about me. But God, there's so many things about God that God wants us to know. Hallelujah. To know God, we must seek him. Psalm 56, 55 verse 6, 6 says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Purpose in your heart that you want to know more about God. This man, through this pandemic. This pandemic, I'm not going to come out weaker, but I'm going to come out stronger because I'm going to use my lockdown days to know more about you. To seek him, we must spend time with him. And he ordains 12 when Jesus was on earth that they should be with him. Every now and then Jesus would take them. Glory to God on the mountainside. Glory to God in a little corner. Stop at somebody's house and he would express more of himself to his disciples. How much of God do you want to know? Hallelujah. 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 We see Exodus Chapter 24, Moses was asked of the Lord to come up into the mount and be there. And the word of God said, and I will give thee tablets of stone and a law and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up, uh, glory to God, and his minister Joshua and went up into the mountain. Glory to God, and we'll, we see that in Exodus chapter 24. But as Moses get closer to the mountain, he said to the other servants, stay here. Oh, somebody help me praise God. Stay here because I have got an encounter with God over there. Hallelujah. And so I must go up myself and Joshua to hear what God has to say to us. Amen. And indeed, God gave him the commandments and the instruction to take to his people. God wants us to pay attention to time. One author, that's author A.W. Trowers, in his book, In the Root of the Righteous, he said, probably the most widespread and persistent problem to be found among Christians is the problem of retarded spiritual progress. Have you made any progress since you started trusting God? Has your faith increased? In God. Why after years of Christian profession do we do so many persons find themselves no farther along than when they first believe? Amen. When I just started out for God, there's some things I would never believe God for. I wouldn't believe that God could do certain things. But as I go and I believe God and I trust God, I realize that he's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a problem solver. He provides money when our finances are low. Is there anybody that God has provided a doctor fee for you as a financial breakthrough, uh, a school fee? Amen. He make a way when you have some other uh, engagements financially to be met and God come true for you. Have you ever been sick? Glory to God. And God minister healing to your body. Yes. And because of those situations, I have chosen to believe God the more. Amen. So the writer concludes that the most profitable cause of this retired spiritual progress is failure to give time to the cultivation of our knowledge in God. We see progress in this Christian life is exactly equal to growing knowledge we gain of the new God in personal experience. You can't tell me that God is bad. I can tell you that God is good. Why? Because of my personal experience with him. Hallelujah. He saves. He delivers. He set free. Amen. He strikes me when I'm weak. And he encourages me when I am discouraged. We see in this instant age, we tend to look for shorter, easier ways of doing everything. Put some soup in the microwave. 
and we touch number three, zero, zero, and soup is ready. But we who are of the old age know about getting a piece of pumpkin, a piece of chicken foot, or yes, right, and get some Irish potato and some chocho and get our soup ready. But in this age, they want the cup soup or the ramen. But that's not about Christianity. Hallelujah. There is no way to abstain, to obtain rather, spiritual reality. Christian maturity is always only on a pay-as-you-go basis. If you don't pay the price, it won't go. You won't go on to know God. We cannot press button and have God suddenly creating us a wonderful, well-rounded knowledge of himself. We have to spend time. We have to take the time. Can I talk to somebody? You have to take the time to come to Sunday school. You have to take the time to read your Bible. You have to take the time to pray. Because we are living in a busy world. And if you don't take the time, you are going to get weak. And when the attacks of the enemy come, what is going to happen to you? You are going to fall right back into your old lifestyle. We see today that Abraham could not. It took him many years of seeking. It took Abraham many years of trusting, many years of waiting and obeying to fully know the God who called him. And so it was with Joseph. So it was with Moses. And so it was with David. When Abraham reached to his supreme test, when after so many years, God blessed Sarah's womb with Isaac. Glory to God. God said to Abraham, Abraham, take your one son. Oh, somebody hear me. Abraham, Isaac rather, and meet me on Mount Moriah. Hallelujah. Abraham knew God. Knew that he was a provider. Knew from past experience that he's the all-time undefeated, undisputed champion. And he can make a way when there is no way. So he was willing to give up his son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he know if God can give him a son at that old age, it's nothing for God to raise him from the dead. Hallelujah. Where is your faith this morning? Hallelujah. Are you spending time to know God the more? Hallelujah. Even Jesus did not mature in a moment. Over a period of 30 years, he spent many long hours in private communion with his heavenly father. And one of the things that I love and learn as a teen when I got saved was there are days I like to be. All alone with Christ my Lord, I can tell him of my troubles all alone. Do teenagers have trouble? Yes. We had trouble then and you still have trouble now. And I believe they have more trouble now. Oh, somebody help me. Because everything that is in the world is at a button on their cell phone. Anything that they want to do illegal and legal, they just touch a button. I was talking to a teenager the other day and he said, mom, and he was saying, mom, because quite a few youngsters call me mom. They said, if you want to break a lock, I can show you it's on the phone. If you want to learn to how to scam, it is on the phone. If you want to learn to do anything that is wrong, it is right there on the phone. So everything is upon their disposal. It takes a discipline not to go into pornography. It takes discipline not to learn how to scam. It takes discipline not to learn how to gamble, but to put your trust and your confidence in God. Hallelujah. 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 St. John 1 verse 14 says, Then he went forth to minister, full of grace and truth. So Jesus came on the scene, full of the Holy Spirit. After his time in the wilderness, he came back with truth and with power to manifest that which his father sent him on earth to do. And so this morning, the heavenly father is looking for disciples who are as their father, who love him enough to spend time with him. Somebody help me praise God. Somebody help me praise God. Somebody help me praise God. Hallelujah. 
the question is asked, are you being honest with God about how you use your time? We get 24 hours in a day. One tenth of that day belongs to God. And that is two hours and 40 minutes. Amen. So guess what? God deserves two hours and 40 minutes every day. In workman of God, Oswald Chambers write, Hallelujah. Peter said to Ananias, Thou hast not lied unto me, but unto God. According to Acts 5 and verse 4, he was given an interpretation. Christian worker, how much time are you giving to prayer? Are you giving to reading your Bible? Oh, I am giving all the time I can. Be careful that you are not lying to the Holy Ghost. Pentecostal lying begins in this way. Dragging down the intense holiness of God, which keeps a man right with God and every details of his life. Let us examine ourselves. And next time we say, I have no time or I give all the time I can do to the study of God's word. I give all the time I can to pray. God grant we may be put on the alert on these lines that we may not found lying to the Holy Ghost. May these words come with warning and with scrutiny and bring our souls face to face with God. Amen. So God knows. So when Ananias and Sapphira lied, it was not about money. Some persons thought it was just about money. It was not about money. Amen. Glory to God. God looks on the intents of our heart. Amen. Whatever we are doing, when we give our tithes and our offering, God knows if we are robbing God with our tithes and our offering. Amen. If we are giving the true amount, uh, glory to God, to his service here on earth. I want you to realize, God is no man debtor. You can never outgive God. Because the more you give to God, the more he'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. As we hurry along. Let us consider some simple human, com human facts common to us all. Let us look on this 26th day of September. Here Isaiah 1 and verse 18 says, Come now and let us reason together, say the Lord. When must we spend time for God? Now. Amen. We must take the time to know God now. Truly, there is a time for every purpose under the sun. Isn't that true? We take time to eat, we take time to sleep, and we take time to work. We take time for education, we take time for entertainment, we take time for recreation, and we take time for relaxation. We take time to visit with families and friends. We take time to exam examine and buy and sell. We don't just go to the market and, they, and say, sell me three pounds of tomato and then put anything in your bag. No, so you take the clear plastic bag and you want to do what? Pick it out yourself because you want the good ones and the best ones. Amen. We take time, amen, to buy and sell the material goods we need and live in this world. We take time for birth. We take time for deaths and we take time for marriage. I remember when my father died. Glory to God. My brother wanted a funeral on one day. And we were saying no for that day. And we had to come and compromise so we could get the exact day that could fit the both of us. Amen. The entire family. So we could have a lovely, a lovely funeral. We take time for birth. When you know that your baby is going to be born. You know, take the uh, husbands. Come on, no man. You know, dress up the room. You make sure you're just in the car. Glory to God that when the labor pain starts, uh, the wife is ready. Every now and then, I remember when I had my, was pregnant. Oh my God, with my last child. I keep telling people, it's only three children for now. You don't get it. <laughs> In my introduction, pastor said three children. I always say three for now. Because I still believe that there are some more children in me. They may not be physical, but there are some more spiritual children I need to birth for the kingdom of God. Do I have a witness on this side? That you believe that there are still some spiritual children leaving you. Do I have a witness over this side? Do I have a witness on the choir, on the praise team? Yes, man. Glory to God. God we are
just natural. But when we accept Jesus, we become spiritual beings. Somebody help me praise God. So we take time for church and social activities. We take time for special events and national and religious holidays. Amidst all this careful allocation of time, where does God come in? A lot of people can come to church and miss God. I've heard about people who go to church, sit in church, and go home and commit suicide. Persons coming to church, listen to the praise and worship, and commit crime. Mm. Hallelujah. So not everybody come to church for a word from God. Hallelujah. Many persons come for different reasons. But I believe somebody's here this morning. Somebody's here for a word. Somebody online. You leave what you're doing. You maybe sit on that couch or sit around that table or sit in your car outside or sit on that tree and just say the preacher that is taking the word today. I am believing for a word from God. Hallelujah. So where is our time for him? Jesus is saying, come unto me. All ye that have labored and are heavy laden. And I, what does a man do, a husband do, with after 20 years in a marriage, working very hard, a wife look at you and say, enough. I can't take this marriage any longer. I'm leaving. Where do you turn? Hallelujah. When the child that you have given all of your time and finance, the university and college, say, mama, mommy or daddy, I don't have anything to do with you and your religion anymore. Who do you go to? Ah, the songwriter said, where do I go when there's no one to go? Who do I call on when no one wants to listen? Who do I lean on when there's no foundation stable? I go to the rock. I know he's able. I go to the rock. Oh, unreasonable it is to take time for everything else but God and yet expect him to know and, ex and expect to know him so clearly that we possess the faith of Abraham. Many of us want to grow in faith and have the faith of Abraham. But are we spending or taking the time to know him? To receive the faith of Abraham. To receive the wisdom of Joseph. To have the devotion of David. To have the insight of Daniel. To have the love of Paul. Hallelujah. That must be a wonder of God towards us. If we want to be wiser, we have to spend time. If we want to develop that faith of Abraham, we have to spend time. If we want to have that insight uh, like Daniel and that love like Paul, Paul said, for me to live is Christ uh, and for me to die is gain that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship uh, of his suffering. I believe somebody online uh, and somebody's in the congregation today is saying, Pastor, I want to go deeper. I want to get wiser. I want to know him more. So I am taking the time to know about God. The word of God said, no. Behold, no is the acceptable time of salvation. No is the time to get deeper. There are so many voices on YouTube. There are so many voices on the airwave telling all manner of evil. Some are saying, all manner of evil about vaccine and about Christianity and about church. Glory to God. But you need to know what the scripture says for yourself. When Jesus was on earth, he stopped at, with the disciples and he said, Peter, what do you say I am? You need to know Jesus for yourself. When I was called to ministry, the preacher that prophesied over my life only confirmed what God spoke to me in my bedroom on my day of fasting and prayer. Amen. When we spend time with God, God speaks to us. Hallelujah. God reveals himself uh, through visions uh, and through dreams. And God is calling the church uh, to come up higher, to get closer. Hallelujah. We generally sing the song, closer to you, Lord. Closer, I pray. Help me draw closer to your will today. It doesn't matter what others may say. Do I have a witness this morning? Lord, I want to draw closer to you. Somebody praise him today. Somebody praise him today. Somebody praise him today. It doesn't matter what my husband wants to say. 
It doesn't matter what my children want to do. It doesn't matter what my boss and my co-workers and my friends want to say. The cry of my heart is to be closer. Is to be closer to you, Lord. We see the signs of the time are everywhere. Frustration and fear are all around. But can I tell you, it's a good time for Christians to increase their faith in God. I know that God is going to fix it for me. I know God is going to watch over me. I know God is going to make a way when it seems to be no way. It's a time to increase our faith in God. If we are ever going to spend time with God, now is the time to do so. If we are ever going to master the Bible, now is the time to do so. If we are ever going to pray without ceasing, now is the time to do so. If we are ever going to become approved unto God, now is the time to do so. And that's why Paul said to Timothy, give yourself wholly to the process of becoming what Jesus Christ has called you to be. Hallelujah. I give myself away so you can use me. Do we have a young person this morning that would say, Lord, at age 12, at age 13, at age 15, at age 18, 21, 25, 30, 35, 50, glory to God, 55, because you're young as you feel, 60, I give myself away. So you, so you can use me. Praise team, you sing a song this morning. Whatever you are doing in this season, don't do it without me. Would you say that from your heart this morning? Whoever you are healing in this season, don't do it without me. Whoever you are blessing in this season, whoever you are anointing in this season, Spirit of the living God, don't do it. If there's a message to take to somebody in Denby, don't do it without me. My mouth is available. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. I'll go where you want me. I'll say what you want me. I'll say what you want me. I'll do what you want me. I'll go where you want me to go, dear Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants us to do what we are doing now, to know him right now. We see spiritual procrastination, putting off God's plan while we pursue our plan is a great enemy. It hinders our spiritual growth so effectively that the devil don't even have to oppose us. When some person are studying at college, they can't teach Sunday school again. They can't be a part of the praise team again because they get a job. Amen. They get married so they can't give, play music. They find other things. Glory to God to substitute their duties for ministry. But the devil loves that. The devil loves when you procrastinate. Hallelujah. He rests while the self, self distrust by wasting our precious time. And so time is precious. Some believers have plenty of free time. Can I talk the truth this morning? Some believer don't have a nine to five job. So you have a, a lot of free time. You are not married. Some of you don't have a lot of children. Glory to God. You have lots of free time, but refuse to take any of it for God. You are not present at fasting. You are not at time for Sunday school. You are not there for worship. You walk to church uh, lazy as if nothing is happening. There's no urgency for testimony. You never have none. To do devotion, me not ready next month. Oh Lord. I'm a pastor for 20 years, so I know about church. I preach in Jamaica, I preach in Trinidad, I preach in America, all over. People are people everywhere. Oh, somebody. Only that some are better looking than some. You know, I always say this when I'm going to preach. You're sitting beside the most wonderful person. I always say, hello neighbor, you're sitting beside the most wonderful person in all the world, and that's me. Look on the person nearest to you and say, hey, that's me. The most wonderful person in all the world, it's me. I am fearfully 
Young people, when I find that scripture in the Bible that I am fearfully and wonderfully made, I run around my house. I don't worry about my shape anymore. I don't worry about my smile. I don't worry about the texture of my hair. I don't worry about my thick lips or my big ears or my big nose. I know that I am fearfully and wonderfully me. Amen. Because carrot can look like apple. And these berry can look like ripe banana. Oh, come on. Come on, somebody. So don't worry if you're a nice berry, stay brown. And if you're a ripe banana, stay yellow. And if you're a carrot, stay orange. And if you're a piece of Negro, yam, stay, oh Lord, stay white. You're fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. Some believers have plenty of time, amen, but refuse to take it, any of it for God. Their spare time is zealously committed to good things. The good things that are ever the enemy of the best. Worldly business usurps spiritual activity. Temporal things crowd out eternal interest. According to Luke 10 and verse 39, many sat at Jesus' feet, Mary rather, sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But these distracted saints, as Martha, hustled about encumbering themselves with activities and activities and more activities from dusk till dawn. Hallelujah. One morning for the week, you get to come to church and you still reach late. Oh, somebody. And you go to work five times for the week and you reach early. And you have an embassy appointment and you reach before cock crow. Oh, hallelujah. They have forgotten the exhortation of 2 Timothy 2 and verse 4. No man that warreth entangled himself with the affairs of his life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. We are a warrior. I am a warrior, not a warrior. W-O-R-R. -R. You have two set of people in church, you know. The warrior and the warrior. Oh, Lord. So sometimes when you hear them I sing, I am a warrior. And a warrior, them I sing, I am a warrior. So you need to know that God is able to supply your need according to his riches in glory. Other saints have very little time. I'm talking about the warrior. Amen. If, uh, uh, other saints have very little extra time. The demands of job, the demands of family and church consumes almost all their waking moment. Yet strangely, some of these hear and answer the call to seek the Lord. How do they do it? Where do they find the time to abide with Jesus in this secret place? They don't find the time. They make the time. Hallelujah. 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 They make the time. And I admire Jesus as he seek workers for his kingdom. Every disciple that he called were working men. He said, come follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. Hallelujah. So they don't really take the time. They have to make the time. Because they uh, obey the scripture in Matthew 6, verse 23, 33, seriously and literally. We can just see the scripture when we are getting saved. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's for salvation. But when it comes on to ministry, when it comes on to service, young people, when it comes on to giving yourself uh, to ministry and to the service and work of the Lord, you have to seek God first in your career. The school you choose, hallelujah, for pep, amen. The career you choose as you move higher, the wife you're going to marry, the job you're going to take, the country in which you're going to live, you have to seek God first, hallelujah. And so Matthew 6, 33 said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. The warriors, they prayer pulling rearrange their daily schedule to make time for God. The question is asked today in closing. Are we willing to take or if needed be make time to see God? Are we willing? Amen. He is the savior of the world. His eyes run to and fro the earth beholding the good and if he seen how much time we used to watch so many different movies. Amen. 
the different soap operas, the different movies, LML, and so many other stations or regular programs. But oh, oh, how many times do we seek to spend time to seek God? I need to hear from you. Whatever you are doing in the street, don't do it without me. There are some young men to be reached, God. Oh, can I reach them? What tragedy do you want me to use in this season? Hallelujah. Because I don't want it to move without me. What will it take to make or take time to seek God? It means rearranging schedules. Reordering our days and our nights. Pastor, what does it take? Rearranging our schedule. Don't put God down at last. When you come from work and you're tired and you don't cook and you do all the other things, you say, it is my Bible reading time. It's my prayer time. It's my devotion time. And guess what? You drop asleep. Oh my God. No, don't give God the walk left. Early in the morning will I seek him like the psalmist said and I will discover his truth in my life. As knowing God become our new chief interest, Many formerly important interests will be per permanent relegated to second place. Beloved, we have made God wait too long. Now is the time to seek him. Now, no other things. All these things the Gentiles seek after. They seek after money. They seek after oaths. They seek after clothes and fame and fashion. But God wants us to do what? Seek him first. In this pandemic that we face, glory to God, it's time to seek him. Every situation, I was saying to somebody today, if God is the just and true God, and other generations go through pandemic and death and famine, and he's going to judge all of us with the same judgment, we have to go through our pandemic. We have to go through our season of death. But as he said to Moses, as you lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, hallelujah, and if the people look on the, that, 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 that tree with that uh, serpent, there we live. Today, if we look to Jesus, we will live. Hallelujah. We can die once, but live again. Hallelujah. Because every person who born once, die twice. Can I say it again? Every person who born once, die twice. But every person who born twice, natural birth and the born again experience, only die once. Hallelujah. So we are not afraid of death. Hallelujah. We are not afraid of death. Hallelujah. Jesus conquers El Teta and the grave. He said, oh Teta, where is thy sting? Oh grave! Where is thy victory? And so we have to spend time so that we can grow in faith in God. Today, if you have free time for God, take it. Hallelujah. You don't have all the husband thing and the nine to five job. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And to be studying. If you have free time, use it to do some Bible study. Use it to go to college. Amen. Use it to know more about God. If you don't have no free time, make the time, re reschedule, reorder your days and your night, and make the time to know God. Only then can you follow after him fully and know the Lord as your spiritual savior and destiny. Hallelujah. Paul said in Philippians 3, that I may know him. Hallelujah. 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 I follow after that I may apprehend that for which also I have apprehend of Jesus Christ. God wants to reveal himself to us. One somewhere I said, the longer I serve him, the sweeter he goes. The more that I love him, more grace he bestows. Each day is like heaven. My heart overflows the longer I serve him. Do I have a witness in the house this morning? The longer I serve him. Hallelujah. The longer I serve him. The longer I serve him. 
it is to know Christ and to make him known in our world today. Hallelujah. That whatever he is doing in this season, we don't want him to do it without us. When he says, get up and go talk to that sister. Uh, I'm just sharing the testimony of my lady's president. Uh, as she spoke last week at church, uh, the Lord spoke to her. She was at her house washing. The Lord said, get up and go over there and talk to the sister. She said she continued to wash her. And the voice of the Lord came to her the second time. She continued to wash. She said, Pastor, I want to make sure it is not myself, uh, but it's the voice of the Lord. And very sternly, the third time, the voice of the Lord said to her, get up and go over there and talk to the sister. And she went. Spoke to the sister, witnessed to her. The sister came, to, the young lady came to church the Sunday, independent Sunday, and gave her heart to the Lord. I was preaching about emancipate yourself, freedom, break the chains. I took some chains to church and I gave her the chain and I said, God has liberated you because you have invited him in your heart. And she dropped the chain on the ground. I said, pick it up uh, and say, freedom. Uh, God has liberated me one more time. And she did it three times. And would I tell you the next, the next Sunday, she was in the hospital. And the following Sunday, she died. Not just she died, but when her sister heard that she died, her sister died also. So on Friday, two earths was in effort built with the two bodies driving in the community. When God speaks to you, don't put it off. You don't know what the next hour is going to be for somebody. Don't take it lightly. Everybody, God sent you to, God already deal with their hearts. When God sent Ananias to Saul, God already deal with Saul's heart. God said to Ananias, Saul prayed, go and lay your hands on him. He has been my chosen vessel. The person may be a drunkard. The person may be a thief. The person may be some person that are doing so many things that are immoral in this world. But did you know that God spoke to them this morning? Did you know that God spoke to them last night? So when God speaks to you and tell you to go to an individual, don't be disobedient. Don't be disobedient. When God puts somebody in your spirit to pray for, go ahead. Stop what you're doing and pray for them. That means... God is doing a work in their heart. Today, I want to say to you, take time and make time to know God. God is waiting for you. God is on the mountain waiting for you to come up higher. Some of you have been saved for a long time. Hallelujah. God wants to use you to do signs and wonders. God wants you to take higher. For you to know his voice audibly. That when he speaks, you will know. You will know that he releases your troubled mind. It's the only voice I hear that makes the difference. And I'll follow one day at a time. Would you stand with me this morning? Hallelujah.